150 đại biểu khai ký tới tham dự hội thảo quốc tế với chủ đề giảng dạy tiếng Anh tại Việt Nam được tổ chức tại Học viện An ninh Nhân dân. Tôi rất hoan nghênh và trân trọng sự phối hợp chặt chẽ của các đơn vị, ban quản lý án và những quốc gia, bộ giáo dục và đào tạo, phân hội nghiên cứu và tổ dạy tiếng Anh của bộ môn ngữ học Việt Nam. Can you hear me? If you hear me, you can press number one in the chat box, please. All right. Hello, teachers. Welcome all of you to the first online meeting of the Fostering Students Motivation and Engagement course. My name is Tang Bing, and I will be the host today. First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you for being here this evening. This online meeting is organized to provide you a space for teachers to share knowledge and address questions and engage in discussion during the learning process. This online meeting is organized by VTSO remote teams and sponsored by Relay. Today, we will delve into Model 1 key concepts. Before starting our program today, I would like to share you how the rules for today's meeting. So, uh, you can have your camera on to mute yourself to avoid background noise. Number three, feel free to unmute yourself and contribute your thoughts. Number four, feel free to fire away with your questions. And last but not least, Vetiso have meaningful gifts from you for you. And I will show you uh, our gifts today. We have prepared five uh, special gifts, which is motivating learning DVD teacher training series for uh, the most activated uh, teachers. So I really hope that you can participate in our meeting today and um, we'll have the gift from Vetiso. Uh, now I want to introduce you. It's my pleasure to introduce our to facilitator today, Ms. Chan Thị Xuân Đài uh, from the University of Đà Nẵng and Mr. Võ Duy Đức, the University of Đà Nẵng. Please welcome to facilitator today. Hello, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. So, sh shall we start? So we start sharing our screen. Can you share the screen now? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, can you all see my uh, screen shared? Yes. 
Okay, before coming to the lesson today, uh, I mean to the sharing section today, um, I would like you all to um, scan uh, the QR code in the screen shared uh, and then enter the, the trauma quiz uh, um, dot com slide. Uh, that would be great if you can um, or in, in the, the in the loop, I mean, um, to uh, in the slide. So that we can have like different kind of questions, interactions and engagement activities. So I would leave here for a few seconds or a few minutes, okay? Before we gonna start. Um, also, in the chat box, you can see um, the link to go directly to the to the quizzes line today. So you can either scan the QR code or or you can go uh, directly with the link. Okay, I might check. There are 28, 29 participants in here already. Okay, 37 of you. Mm -hmm. uh, should, should we wait for a few seconds? This one and Miss Ben, what do you think? Yeah, let's wait for a few more sec uh, for yeah, a few okay. more minutes. Yeah. So I will leave uh, um I will leave it here so that you can or join us for the very competitive games and sharing today. So uh, maybe I, I would like to share with you something. Um, so before we we jump to our uh, very first section of um, the very first uh, uh, section of VTSO and uh, collaborating with uh, Relo today, um, we, as a facilitator, we, we just would like uh, to exchange information, exchange ideas with you. And also we would like to go through a different kind of perspective on so um, the sharing from your experience so that uh, we would have some kind of multiple choice questions. Um, and would you, um, uh, and we would like you to just like uh, share and have some discussion also. And we would like you to just share it on the chat box or either you can unmute yourself and share with us today, okay? Uh, as long as uh, you can share in that um, experience or any kind of story in teaching, uh, we would really uh, value it as our like um, reward today, okay? So uh, your contribution would be counted as like um, the lucky ones to get the rewards from uh, VTC Soul. So uh, during the time we, we wait, please download the, the uh, background picture so that you can change your background. Oh, 49 of you, okay, 49. Fifty, good number.
So actually, I can see in the list, we have like 67 participants. So where are you? Where are you? Please join us. It means that 18 more participants, you are able to join us in here. So we will be starting at 7, 10. 7, 10. Shortly. And two more minutes, right? Okay. Yeah, just leave it two more minutes. Okay, 53 of you. Okay, it's 7.10 already. So, um, yeah, uh, just a reminder for you all, if you, you come later, uh, you can. The thing is, uh, you can. You can join uh, the quiz after that, like during the time we are having uh, the presentation. So I, I uh, would like to start now so that we don't uh, waste any more time today, okay? Um, let me see what is it. Okay, so um, welcome you all to the very first meeting of Fostering Students Motivation and Engagement course. Um, this is online meeting one. My name is Võ Duy Đức, and another facilitator is. My name is uh, Đăng Thị Xuân Đài. So okay. we are both from the University of Da Nang. Okay, and we are so delighted to be here uh, to share with you some of the key concepts and also uh, some uh, some sharing about the practical experience with you um, with this uh, topic, okay? Oh, just give me a few seconds. Okay, let's go to the next part. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Duke for the introductions. Um, so good morning, uh, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Dai. Uh, I am um, Mr. Duke's College at uh, VNUK, the University of Da Nang. So I'm so delighted to be here tonight with you um, to share the key concepts and current practices of the course on fostering students' motivation and engagement. So this is our first online uh, meeting, and we are going to have five more, uh, four more um, over the next few months. So the agenda for tonight, um, there will be two main parts uh, um, on the agenda. The first one um, is the part on introducing, or just really not introducing, but just recap the key concept or the theoretical background to the course um, so the, the, the first model is quite theoretical by itself. So in the first part, uh, we will be looking at the what is motivation and um, engagement in ELT, what type of motivation are there, and theoretical models to promote motivation um, in language teaching. And following the, the, these key concepts, Mr. Duke, we'll be sharing and discussing the current practices to promote motivation uh, motivation in classroom. 
So we try to be as um, interactive as we can. Uh, so please feel free to share your thought with us when there is a Q&A session, all right? So be, uh, before I start the, the first question, uh, I would like to remind that before we are going to have several Q&A session along the way, and before giving an answer, um, please have a brief introduction about yourself, like your name, the city where you are from, or the school you are from, and then um, please turn on your mic and share what you think. All right. So now, um, before we get start get started, I would like to have the first question for you. Uh, for this part, please turn on your mic and uh, give your thought. For those who cannot turn on your mic, please share your answer in the chat box. All right. So. My first question is, what motivate you to participate in this course? Anyone would like to answer, please? Yeah. Uh, so fly, can you please yeah, share with us? Hello, hello, Ms. Sundai and Mr. Vosidit the host today. Um, for me, when I participate in this course, I really want to motivate my students and get the engagement in my classroom. So every step in the lesson plan, I would like to have their engagement. And also, sometimes I get the feedback from them and I think that the feedback will be very interactive with the teacher. If the teachers know how to uh, really give them the, the the constructive feedback. So that is the reason why it motivates me to participate in this course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your sharing. Yeah, that's great. Anyone else would like to share your um, idea, please? Mm. I can see that uh, Nga uh, from Hanoi. So Nga would like to join this um, this course because Nga would like to know more about how to motivate her students uh, to join your online class, all right? So um, I think, I hope that you can learn from the experience from the participants today. Also, I have the, an answer from uh, Jang. Um, so she found it hard to keep her student motivated. So, um, so she want to join this one to know more about the tips and techniques. So, um, all right. So as thank you everyone for your sharing. That is really um, engaging. I can see that you are really engaging in the uh, in our sharing session today. Um, so as, as can be uh, seen, so you can see that we all have the reason to do something or to learn something and um, in, in a word, it is called motivation. Um, so the definition, uh, next slide is please, Mr. Dick. So the, let's go to the first one. What is motivation? So you can see that the motivation itself um, is a key factor in the successful of study. And it provides students with the reason for doing a course of study, the reason for learning. Um, so if, if you do the reading, then you can see that um, motivation is, is defined at the desire, the willingness to, or uh, the enthusiasm to, uh, to get the goal. And um, so as a language teacher, what, what do you think, um, how the, the, what motivation will look like? when the students are motivated to learn. So what does it really look like when your students are motivated to learn? Anyone to want to share? So for example, like myself, when I have a, a student with motiv motivated, um, are motivated, they will be very attentive. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I see someone saying that they could look at you, uh, look at me, Mister Miss Dum. Yeah, that's right. So very attentive, right? Yeah, you pay attention to the class. Ah, uh, ask the question. That's right. Yeah. So they are on the the sign of showing that when the students are motivated. So they, um, miss, when they are motivated, you can see that they are engaged in the lessons. You can, you can see that the students are attentive. They are, they feel more optimistic and they have the passion to study. And as a language teacher, that is on what we want, right? So that is on what we we ask for in our our students. Um, this is the hap the happiness that all the teachers like us want to see in our student. And I think that is why we are here today to uh, to learn how to motivate on the student. Uh, so before, uh, thank you for the continuous sharing of uh, of the reason uh, of the how it looks like when. The students are motivated, so you can see that if, um, in order for us to foster motivation in our uh, in the language classroom, we need to know motivation um, inside out. So that take me to the into the introduce or recap the next uh, concepts, the types of motivation. So we can see that um, motivation is normally classified into two types. The first one is internal motivation. Yes, that's right. And the second one is external motivation, or we call it intrinsic or extrinsic um, from the reading. So um, can anyone remind me of what it means by intrinsic motivation? So can anyone share with me what it means by intrinsic motivation, please? Maybe I will share this. So the intrinsic motivation come from the insides of the student and it includes some of their aspect like the autonomy when a student actively want to study and um, they have the sense of belonging when, uh, actually, when, when he or she come to the class and feel comfortable when they, they join the class, the curiosity and yeah, some some of the rest. Yes, uh, I, Mr. Uh, Hun, can, can I ask you one more question? So for example, if you are, your student is kind of uh, have intrinsic motivation, what will his or her answer be when, um, when he is asked, why do you want to study English? Um, I think that because they have their um, desire for learning the language and so um, they, they have some first, how can I say, they have a really some specific goals when they study. Some of them have their uh, intrinsic motivation, like they, they have a boyfriend or girlfriend <laughs> and <laughs> some of them have children and uh, children are learning and working in UK or US, they really want to learn because they want to visit them. Uh, mm -hmm. And one beautiful, one beautiful day when they get out their street, they can contact with their speakers, with native speaker. They mm -hmm. don't want to uh, stand or keep themselves inside the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. That is the need from themselves, uh, the internal need that they want to uh, have the new another language to communicate or uh, to learn about other things uh, uh new things around the world right so um so we have another type thank you uh Hun. and then we have another type um of motivation it is called extrinsic so uh, extrinsic is what is called um external or external motivation or the motivation that comes outside of the learners. All right. So with this kind of motivation, um, 
can you can you please give me an example of extrinsic motivation, please? Yes. Can I say something? Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, please. Yes, I'm a teacher uh, for kids, a uh, young learner from uh, five to uh, 12 years old. And I often use uh, some uh, techniques to uh, motivate uh, extrinsic uh, motivation like uh, stickers or points or some uh, gifts after maybe one week, two weeks, or even um, uh, when they finish the course also to how say um to reward them for hard working and have a good behavior a heart and have a good grade and also i can see that some extrinsic motivation come from the the parents uh the parents um expectation for the kids uh, when they have a uh, how to say uh get a good score they will also give um some money or maybe have have maybe have a wish to do something mm. yes. yeah that's right and it's also made from come from the the teachers that they really afraid to maybe um to be failures maybe mm. to um to be not as good as uh their friends their classmate mm, exactly i, I, I think, think so. we have a uh, three uh, views are from the first one that really want to uh, get the sticker or get some gift from the teachers. Next one come from the parents and the the feel feeling of failures to mm. other classmates. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's right. So, um, wow, well, uh, very good analysis of the student external uh, motivations. Thank you, uh, ha, Miss Ha. Yeah, that's right. So um, uh, on the on the screen, you can see that we have the two circle. It is shown the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Sometimes there isn't a clear cut between uh, what is what, what is intrinsic and in, uh, extrinsic. Some there are overlapping area. Uh, actually, it doesn't really um, matter much whether um, which one is more important than than the others? As a language learner, we 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 fre frequently um, told our student to um, that they need to foster intrinsic motivation. Um, but uh, in the reality, you can see that we are not that lucky. Uh, so um, some a lot of students learn uh, have both um, both. In, uh, internal and external and that that is also changed over time as well so it doesn't have to be one uh at this time it could be external motivation but later when they are motivated it can be become internal yeah um so in in the next exercise i'm not going to 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 talk a lot on this i would like you to do a mini quizzes on um what it is by Identifying the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Um, Mr. Duke, please, with a quiz. So I would like you to read the questions and see which type of motivation the, the following statement belong to. I want to earn prizes to build a convincing profile for university. So which type of motivation does it belongs to. Okay, <laughs> very quick. So uh, I can see that. Hi. Oh, Lin. Lin is the one who got the first one. Yeah, so you can see that. Um, I want to learn the price because to to build a convincing profile for a university. So you can see that this is, this could become, uh, I can see some choose intrinsic motivation, some choose extrinsic motivation and some both. Um, can someone share with me what do you think, what it is and why you choose that option?
anyone share with me, please? Huyền, what did you choose? Huyền, oh, Huyền. <laughs> I, I selected bow because I think um I have in mind that. So when he's want to earn a prize, maybe he is ambitious. <laughs> he is ambitious <laughs> from inside. So mm. he want to earn a prize to be a convincing profile for universities mm. and both and and even for himself. Yeah, yeah. So I think um that that is correct because sometimes you can see at in the first place if you look at the the prize that is from external factors he do it, he did it for the uh, her, uh, for 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 the prize but with the internal motivation to make him better for university that is for the for the goal later his goal later i think so that's what uh, i think um the the reading want to share with you it's not really uh, really so crucial that which one is more important. It is the it, it does matter that the student is motivated to learn. It's more important than than what it is, what it is external or is internal. All right, now let's move to the next one. Next questions, please. So this one is pretty, um, I think it is pretty obvious, right? So for this one, um, I have Dishan to be the one who chose, we have 22 who chose intrinsic motivation. So is this quite um, obvious that the learner find English is important and interesting to the person, and that's why they choose to study this one. Um, all right, let, thank you. Let's move to the next one. All right. This is an interesting one. So let's see the answer then. Oh, we still have Dijin Kuma on the board. Some. Uh, yeah, this one, some chose the intrinsic, some extrinsic, some both. Um, wow, I think Oops. Mr. Dip, I think I think this is a technical problem, I think. I see, I yeah. All right, okay. Sorry, thank you. sorry for that. Sorry for that. So you can uh, have the scoreboard, right? All right. Yeah. Just wait for me a few seconds because I would skip this one. Um, All right. And move to this. This one, right, Miss Dai? Yes. All right. Uh, now, I just before we move to this one, I would like to uh, to mention a little bit about the crush one because uh, that one is interesting. Uh, in the la last slide that I shared with you, it's um, you can see that there are some overlapping area where it is not really um, identifiable whether it belongs to internal or external. Uh, as I mentioned to you, and also I think I saw the comment from one of the members, uh, maybe from Grace, uh, she also men mentioned that um, external isn't always bad. So I would like to emphasize that. And I think in the readings, in the theory, they also mentioned that um, it's not good or bad, or bad. 
both both types of motivations are valuable and and uh, students can move between them so you can see on the slide is a, a, a continuum or the the spectrum um, a scale of motivation it goes between in extrinsic and intrinsic and um, so as a teacher we can see that if when the students are motivated be, because of external factors, um, it is more teacher centers. But when the student move towards the intrinsic um, of the scale, then it is more towards learner driven. So that means when the student, the learner will learn for the love of learning and um, it is believed that this is when learning takes place more effective and the student can make the most of their learning. All right. Uh, so the our, our uh, this is just the theoretical background. And then uh, our job is what to do to facilitate motivation um, or uh, to promote motivation. So in, in our theory, we and, and within the framework of this course, we, uh, we, are, we were introduced three models to promote motivation. Uh, the first one was the basic human needs. So um, three basic human needs, which uh, we are all motivated to meet. Uh, the need to be to feel competent, um, autonomous, and related. And uh, as a teacher, we need to learn, or I think, uh, how to make learning fit into these needs, and also to to learn how to avoid making our our class conflict with these needs. So. Um, for example, like for competence, uh, we need to build our student confidence and by designing activities at the right level of um, difficulty. Or for example, if we want to meet the needs for autonomy of the students, we make the lesson relevant to the student by like giving the student the choice to study uh, which classroom to choose in the in the uh, in our activities. Um, so for, for uh, and when it comes to relatedness, by relatedness that means we create a positive, supportive, um, in learning environment, learning community, and um, we encourage, uh, embrace change, embrace differences, um, and encourage co co cooperation in classroom by having group work. Um, encouraging uh, positive feedback, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I will not go into details, uh, which Mr. Duke will be sharing later. Uh, the second model um, that is introduced in our course is the growth mindset. So with the, with the growth my, mindset, um, students who who have or who adopt this growth mindset tend to embrace the challenges and mistakes and um, they see this mistake as an opportun opportunity for learning. So as such teachers in a language classroom, the more we encourage this, the more opportunity for the kids or the student to learn. So we open up more opportunities for the student if they can have, uh, we can build uh, growth, have a more, um, sorry, growth mindset. Yeah, so, uh, and the last module that is introduced in our course is color ARCS model. So ARCS stands for attention. Um, relevant, satisfaction, and confidence. So as you can see from this, the definition, um, ARCS 
So I, I just want, I, I'm not going to go into details about this model because Mr. Duke will be talking more about it later. But uh, let's take an example from relevance. Um, so by relevance, we should, we as a language teacher, we should make learning relevant to students by explaining, giving clear instructions of the activities that we are going to introduce um, connecting the language, the knowledge that uh, we are going to introduce with the prior knowledge, with the past knowledge. So in that way, we can make the activities, our lessons more relevant to the students. And uh, if you can see that this ARCS model is quite fits quite very nicely into the, with the, uh, the three human basic needs, that model that I just mentioned uh, earlier. Yeah, so I think uh, these are the three models that uh, help or will, we can base on this to promote motivation in classroom. So uh, later on in the next part, Mr. Duck, I would like now to hand over to Mr. Duck to share with you uh, the current practice when applying this practice in language classroom. And in this part, we would like to hear a lot from you. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Miss Dai. Um, yeah, before uh, coming to my section today, uh, uh, I think that it is time for us to just take a group of photo because I never seen, uh, I've never seen like 91 participants in, in, in the group today. So, uh, please, uh, Miss Ben and Miss uh, Wen, can you please uh, take a group of photo of us? So can, sure, sure thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can can everybody? Can you please turn on uh, your camera, uh, and then we can it? have a group of. Photo. Can you stop sharing screen a little bit because we can uh, take more photo of all the participants? Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. So everybody, please put a lovely smile on your face. Uh, sorry for my sore throat, but I'm about to take uh, the very first beautiful picture of all of you. All right. So one, two, three, everybody. Cheese. Lovely. Okay, another shot. Another shot. Okay. Since we got about like, oh my God, 90 people in the Zoom today. What an amazing number. So I need to take the second shot of the second page. One, two, three, say cheese. All right, wonderful. I need another shot. You look beautiful and gorgeous. Another shot, everybody. Right. Okay. Right. One more. Just, just bear with me. One, two, three. Thank you so much, everybody. You look great. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Mr. Dick. Okay. Can I can I continue my presentation now? Um, sure. Okay. Um. Just wait for me a few seconds. I'm trying to find it. Uh, wait. Here you go. Okay. Okay. Can you all see my uh, screen shared? Yes, Mr. Duke. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, here we go. So, um, before coming to my section today, uh, I would like you all to think about uh, some kind of informative presentation of Miss Dai. She is really like um, thoughtful and really, uh, really about that. She is really like uh, willing to share a lot um, uh, about the theor theoretical background. For me, um, it's not really a practices because like, I think I'm I'm not a really um, experienced teacher in the field, but I think that um, sharing is caring. So I think um, for some discussion, I would like to hear more from you, like as a teacher from like uh, teaching uh, English for kids or even secondary school or even like high school Um, for me as a university uh, context. Um, so I think that like it, it would be valuable for us to think and to share 
about um, different kind of view and perspective and how would you, you overcome. Or even if you can't find a solution for your own class, just please uh, share with us your problem, of, of course, about the motivation and engagement in the class um, so that we can think of an, a, a good solution uh, for the whole community today, okay? So um, I would like to start my section with like um, a few more questions for you to share or to play to gain more um, points. Like, I think that it, it would, it seems that like uh, you would have like a uh, big chance to get a reward from, from the organizing board. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go with the very first um, questions of mine. That will be reviewed from Miss Line section. So according to the theory, which of the following is not one of the basic human needs that students are motivated? Okay, congratulations, Mr. This hand. Sorry, Miss Lin, Miss Maichu. Wow, you rock. Okay, yeah. Um, you you got um the main point of the whole theory today. So yeah, security is not one of the three basic humans' needs. Um, yeah, come up to the to my second question. <clears throat> So which of the following statement is true about growth mindset? According to Carol, Carol Jack. Wow. Okay, well done. A lot of people answer my question today. Um, Still top three, yeah, when bang. Um, yeah, uh, my, my um, my answer for this would be like student with a grow mindset, embrace challenges and mistakes. So um, I would like to share with you a few things about this uh, before coming to the next part. So what I like uh, from the reading, a uh, key concept is what is that? Um, according to Carol, uh, a grow mindset is something that intelligent intelligence is not stated. It could be developed. For fixed mindset, it would be stated. So um, somehow for the student in the class, they may have certain kind of behavior that you could like um, um, predict or you may have some kind of um, expect that you may have, uh, like, like they may have like some kind of mindset before. Okay, mm -hmm. so for me, a pro mindset it should be a positive one and it should be encouraged more in the class. So um, that's why I just want to move it up to the, the question discussion today. So could you please um, provide some example of strategies that teacher can use to encourage a growth mindset in the classroom? For me, uh, let me tell you my story. So the teacher should praise students, not only depending on their own results, but also their effort to complete the task. So for me, I would teach some kind of um, mixed level classroom. It's not really big, but for me, like it's hard for me to keep control everything for high scoring performance. Um, a student, I, I, I mean, high scoring performance, uh, they would like, um, they would like to get most of my attention when they get really high marks in the exam or test. But for me, I would not praise them as much as the one who are weaker and they could try their best to just complete the task. Like at, at the very um like at the very um average rate. So um yeah that could be a, a really good one to think of. So could you please um um, unmute yourself to share with me some kind of strategies that could do in the class or you may leave it on, on the chat box. Uh -huh. Can I? Yeah, everybody. Oh, hello everyone. I'm Huynh. So I want to share a bit 
of my strategy to support my student with a growth mindset. Um, first, uh, I, I'm teaching uh, English for specific purposes and toric preparation. So um, when I assign my student with the homework and the tasks that they need to complete, as usually involve the ways that they can do and for each post I post on their Facebook group, I usually attack a pictures of how can I say motivation and encouragement. You can do it better one percent every day and <laughs> other stuff. So uh, when they read the the post and complete the tasks, they can feel motivated. And mm. for some activities like I uh try to involve some kinds of support into uh, some arranged activity. Activities are arranged. So I cut out um, a light port into many pieces, unscramble them, and then they need to arrange in the correct order uh, at the end of the class. And um, actually the last lesson, I did those activities and they feel really motivated. Like um, the one who want to move the mountain need to carry the very first uh, rocks. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's a way I encourage my student to have the grow mindset. And I really think that, so it's not just the one day, just the problem of one day or two days or two, three or four lessons. It's, it's a really a long process that you can really have a really nice and a class with a grow mindset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I can I can see that you have like two really inspiring activity in 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 your teaching career. Yeah, I I would definitely agree with the very first one. Yeah, um, like showing the quotes of the day, kind of right to just motivate them with the quotes, and also um, uh, you just have like have like a rearranging activities some kind of uh, to to make them like realize the importance of the lesson and also where they are at in the class right to to motivate them to like to have like some kind of intrinsic motivation right yeah i would definitely agree with you with that yeah i could learn from you honestly so uh, i just go over with the chat box like uh miss tanben you could share like i will give command on the process are you doing well keep going don't say you are really intelligent yes i agree this would uh, mitigate the situation that the strongest student would argue with the weakest student like who are you are you smarter than me something like that so somehow yeah some kind of the commands from the teacher could could, could matter in here in this uh, context um for miss grace Chu, um i encourage them to ask questions when we like to lesson to encourage the critical thinking this has to be trained at first yeah definitely agree like uh, for university student even they are like they are hesitant to share their ideas and it's hard for me to, to, to see their critical thinking during the the leading uh, section but if you could make them uh, or motivate them or encourage them to do that yeah it would definitely be good but for Vietnamese students, I think that they are quite, um, I mean, like it's hard for, for, for us to just like uh, make them aware of the whole process, especially for the, the large class, large science class, uh, home fam. I never criticize my students if they make mistakes. Uh, I give them the chance to contribute. Yes, I would definitely agree. Um, Sometimes I would stop the stronger students, like, um, from talking too much and I would let the weaker student to talk more and or just write down more to to contribute to to the whole um lesson aims that could be the one provide opportunity provide opportunity for students to reflect on their learning experiences their successes challenge yeah but can uh like when when would you do this would it be like at the beginning of the next course or at the very um the last lesson of the course, and somehow would you would you go over it for the last science classes, like for me like it would be a big matter for the teacher to see how's it going with the reflection. But like yeah, it's a good idea 
society, just provide them with a, some kind of individual or self reflection. I in uh, Fong Nguyen Thi Thu. I encourage and motivate students which share their answer. Yes, definitely share answer and their opinion about the topic that they learn. I want to help them develop their confidence and critical thinking. Yes, I I also do this in my class. After delivering the lesson, Nhat Tai, the the past simple and past continuous, I use picture story, develop their mindset. They were really creative. Wow, interesting. Mr. Nhat Tai, are you the one who used the, um, the TED Talk or something from YouTube? I have seen you in other like VMOC um courses are you can you unmute yourself you i think that you've got a lot of idea in here yeah thank you very much mr uh, mr nhat tai um miss dan nice idea nice try if they have wrong answer yes i would agree uh phương an i just give them some minutes to think first present yeah a few time to think yeah a lot of ideas in here Wow, thank you very much. I would um like I just give up. Yeah. Uh sometimes I think that like uh to also to minimize the burden of the teacher in the class, just think about the growth mindset of the student. Uh teacher may pair or group the student. Uh I think that depending on your own purpose, you may uh, plan the student with um different levels or maybe with a set with a common uh, interest or maybe with different levels of speaking or level of attention, something like that, could be a good idea for you to just change the classroom atmosphere. Yeah. Um, I really, I really like, um, I really like the really nice compliment on student. They finish the class. I want to add more that teacher should be specific and detailed compliment. On a good job, it up. I will, yeah. Definitely, I would go go through. Yeah, Hale, thank you very much. I would have another discussion question later on, because like I, I would go through um that kind of section later on. Thank you for reading my mind today. Okay, so let's go up next. I would have uh, another chance for you all to just like to engage with my section. Um. Okay. So the next question would be multiple choice about ARCS. What does it stand for? What does it stand for? Really easy game. Okay, time's up. So we'll see the top three of us today would be. Oh, still so this, this hand, right? Lynn and Grace too. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, so sad. See, a few of you would like uh, make some kind of mistakes. Maybe Miss I feel a bit disappointed in here. But the thing is like, yeah, it would be attention, relevance, calm confidence and satisfaction please remember this um kind of uh abbreviation because like it's good to you to think about attention relevance and confidence satisfaction the thing is like when you go through these models you would identify some kind of specific purposes for their own class and also for each stage in the lesson you will see how is it going to motivate the student from the beginning of the lesson to the end of the lesson okay so I would go next. The second question would be. Okay, according to the ARCS model, how can teacher promote the student's confidence? This must be the hard one. It is better. Who has better understanding?
Okay, we'll see the top three still there. Wow, that's no cha change. Okay, congratulations. Um, okay, that will be providing a clear instruction and expectation. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Hun, right? Are you, am I correct? Mr. Hun, right? Um, yeah, um, instruction is really important and expectation is really important. For me, for the first few years of my teaching career, I didn't expect that much to, to communicate with the student about my expectation. But for now, I think that to have a clear instruction and expectation for student right at the beginning of the, the course, of the lesson, is something that you can um, think of when you are not um, going to do it in the next few months or maybe you haven't do it for the, the next few, um, over the last two or three years. Yeah, kids, keep it short and simple. Yes, I agree. So let's come up to the final discussion, question for discussion. So how can the teacher incorporate the principle of ARCS, attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction model into the classroom practices to promote student motivation? For me, for me, I would like to share some kind of uh, my perspective, uh, perceptions or perspective for you um like uh, i am an, an english teacher so um i would point out the errors of the student when they they have some kind of speaking practice or a writing practice and also i would suggest them with some possible improvement so for my speaking classes pronunciation is a thing but somehow uh the way that you would like them to uh, to focus on, for example, if you want to focus on their confidence, please don't just focus on their error every time they make. Like don't stop them talking because it would have a great impact on their um, like fluency, something like that. And also for me, uh, for that kind of fluency focus, I would like wait to the end of the performance and then I would list out some kind of like um, systematic um, error to see, okay, you have some kind of uh, group of mistakes in here, try to practice more. And then I would give them some kind of YouTube uh, practice to let them uh, see or watch later on and then practice um, themselves. Because you know what, like for English teacher, uh, even like for English centers, like we don't have much time you just focus on the errors itself. You have to focus, focus on more uh, like um, the way that they would develop themselves in, in the class or in the whole course. So in here, that's my story. That's my story. So for all of you as a, as a teacher, do you have any kind of sharing for me in principle of ARCS in the class? So I can see um, in here, like Mr. Hun, like you try, you say you said that uh, trying to give instructions slowly, yeah, but sometimes the time constraint of the class would be a big matter for for me and for I think for the most of the teacher in here. Like if you could have like forty minute lesson, like it's it's hard for us to just maintain it. But for a few the first few um lesson, yeah, that would be working. Yeah, you have some some thing to talk. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean is, you need to give the clear instruction and what you expect your student to do during the lesson. Um, it is not. It will not take a long time for the teacher to give the instruction, and it's usually I double check the instruction. I ask my student about their uh, process that they will do, like you know, for the step one, step two, and step three, and step four. What will you do for the step, and then. They, they start the activity and they facilitate the lesson. Mm. So you have your own clear outline, right? Yeah, like, that's right. Outline, so, and then you introduce them to the whole class. Yeah. Am um, I correct? Yeah, that's right. Because five minutes before I start, I usually mm -hmm. write um, on the whiteboard about what they will do for the overall lesson. And then I ask them to repeat and make sure they understand what I say. Mm. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Hun. Um, yeah, I would grow. Um, I would scroll down, Miss Alex. Like his it um his yeah. Um, Miss Bun command to student three to five strengths, and one to two points. Yeah, this re this reminds me of some kind of sandwich class. Ah, sorry, sandwich um advice. Sorry, <laughs> we have three layers, right? We have three layers. Like we would mention the strength of a student, and then some kind of um some kind of errors, and then we um come up with the solutions after all. Yeah. Try to include information of a student's interest, uh, such as black bean or TikTok viral video that are relevant to the content of yes, I would definitely agree, Miss Hong Fan. Am I correct? Miss Hong Fan. Yeah, I would definitely agree. But the thing is, like I, I just want to raise a concern in here. Like some kind of Western centric book. Some kind of Western centric book. They would focus more on Taylor Swift. Bruno Marx or something like that. So this could be a good idea for teachers to be a starter of creating the new activity or similar activity um, to, to think about, okay, are, are there any local or hot of Vietnamese singer or actors on the social media? Yeah, the teacher would take that into account. Um, group task, uh, that one. I would I will not just an individual. I hope to I hope to will not raise student competitive in the class. So that class may can better the social learning and cash. Mm, yeah. I I would agree with you, but somehow if there there wouldn't be the competitiveness in the class, that would be a bit boring for me. Somehow. Uh, creating some 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 kind of um, some kind of like uh competitive uh classroom setting would be a good idea for English teacher. But like at what point, what stage would you mitigate it? Would you like alleviate it? Right. Um. Yeah. But I I would agree with you on on this point. Um. Restate the lesson content in real life situation current event or students' personal experience to demonstrate the practical application. Yes, I would definitely agree with you, uh, Mr. Nguyen Duy Tung. Uh, Tung, am I correct? Sorry for, for my spelling. Yeah, uh, some uh, real-life situation would be a good one. For example, for general classes, um, like give it by um, some kind of lesson related to giving advice, you may think of some kind of role play as a like uh in in the local market buying fish buying seafood something like that, uh, to have the student to contextualize, uh and then it will be um more familiar to them, uh Mister Nhok Tai um when is was can this so the professional that suggest that we should give a wrap oh sorry. Um, give around three sentences for an instruction. Because if we instruct too long, the student won't understand. Yeah, I was there. I was in County Seoul 2024. Yes, I would definitely agree. If it's more than that, don't do it, right? And, it's, um, and for me, correcting error, we should not correct all the mistakes. Mm, yeah, I, I mentioned before, uh, you have to decide well, what kind of uh, thing you are focusing on. Like, uh, is it about confidence or fluency? you would have some kind of solution. Uh, if you focus on the vocabulary or lexical resources, what would you uh, focusing on or focus on? For leading activity, I often tell an interesting story, including vocabulary previous. Yeah, good one. Yeah, I like it. Um, Lê Ngọc Phúc Yên, I think uh, you uh, missed, right? Miss Lê Ngọc Phúc Yên, thank you. I love it because they are trained about the word, yeah. Connecting the, the lesson would be a good idea. Oh, that's good. For reading lesson, I let the student choose a piece of reading within a certain context. In bright receptacle, okay, feel like they are coming to the class not to learn. Mm, yeah, uh, for university student, yeah, I'm doing it like trying to connect the, the real life text or um, maybe like, you know what, like um, I, I was teaching like about cloud computing 
and they are not thinking about, okay, what is it in the real life? And then I just give them some kind of example, like iCloud, or they will be a share one. Oh, wow, that's so, so close to them. You see what I mean? Yeah, I would definitely agree. When was it? Um, yeah, thank you, Miss Dai, to to go beyond, um, to go beyond my 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 view. Yeah, thank you very much. I agree, but sometimes I forget to you as a cute, as a cute. Yeah, uh, for for teacher, we have a lot to do. Like it's it's fine, it's fine. We have to learn, right? So um, I think that's it for today. I think uh, it's it's up for me to to just go through with the very interactive and engaging um uh sharing with you all. Thank you very much. Oh, Nguyễn Thị Thu Áo phần start the lesson organizing the warm up. Um, Chrissy's lesson comfortable. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Miss Thu. Yes, I would definitely learn a lot from communicative classes. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, just wrap up a few things. So I just go through the two um, the two ideas about uh, the uh, how to incorporate uh, the growth mindset activities in the lesson and also about um, the model ARCS uh, sorry, ACRS uh, model of, of, um, of colors, right? Um, so I think that somehow in this sharing section today, we could have a better view of what we have learned. And we could share a lot of idea about uh, different kind of contexts and also the things that we could learn from other um, opportunities like workshop or, or conventions or something like that. So thank you very much for your participation today. So I would uh, leave the stage back to Miss Wen and Miss Bun. Okay, thank you. Thank you our two facilitators today and I really I think that all of you have participated very well but I want to uh, congratulate for five participants who actively joined our meeting today. Uh, Mr. Zidok, can you congratulate for three uh, per, two people who are uh, on the leaderboard of the Quizy game? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Just yeah. wait for me. Can, can you second. share the screen and we will uh, congratulate three of them. And beside, I also uh, can see the contrib contrib contribution from Ms. Uh, Ms. Halle and Mr. Uh, Dang Van Huynh. And I really hope that you can send me the uh, address and also the phone number so we can send the gift to you. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, contributing and attending very Actively in our meeting today. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait for me a few seconds. Just wait for me. Yeah, please. we are waiting for the <laughs> leaderboard from Mr. Ziduk. Um, where well, I could get it. Mr. Duk, oi, you made us have a heart attack. <laughs> um, where is it? Uh, report here. Um, meeting classroom. So, um, yes, top three is here. Let me share with you. Ah, so satisfying. Okay, can you see my my uh, screen share? Uh, Miss Ling, uh, Mr. Dishand, and Miss Mai Chu. Mai Chu. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you please thank you so much the, can you send me the address as well as the phone number so we can send you the gift <laughs> yeah i would definitely i'm eagerly waiting for that yeah you can send me via uh, zalo or in zoom is okay <laughs> but thank you everyone to joining us today and thank you our two facilitator uh, Mr. Vosiduk and also Ms. Sundai. And I would like all of you to send a big thank to our facilitator today. And I hope that um, you can join four more meetings online in the future and we can um, together learn about the motivation as well as the engagement from students. And also we, um, we can uh, apply in our classroom as well as share and discuss 
uh, the way to help our students to engage more in our lesson. And I hope that uh, this course is meaningful to you and helpful to you. Ms. Queen, do you want to say something on behalf of VTSO? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm really sorry for my sore throat, but thank you, Mr. Dick and Ms. Dai for and everyone for a very productive and interactive sharing session tonight. And we are looking forward to seeing you in the second meeting on the 14th of April. So thank you very, very much, everybody. And I hope that you will enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay, see you soon. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you and goodbye. Have a nice week, you. evening. Goodbye, see you. You have a lovely night. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Dick. All right, yeah. And Kathy Gokome.